okay hello everyone and here we are with a new topic for today uh, we are continuing with the metabolism of lipids and today I'm gonna talk about one very important metabolism and that is metabolism of lipoproteins extremely important for everyone who wants to work uh, in a healthcare system for future doctor future nurses healthcare professionals to understand the metabolism of lipoprotein particles due to their enormous role in the development and of different pathological states and diseases we are going to see what's what is going to be about so uh, for a start uh, in order to warm up a little bit i'm going to uh, remind you about uh, some general information regarding lipoprotein particles so this is something that we have uh, studied in details during general biochemistry course but uh, in order to remind ourselves and to enable us to understand properly the metabolism, uh, let's understand the structure of lipoprotein particles. So we all know that they are actually uh, particles which are responsible for the transport of hydrophobic lipids by blood. Because we all know that lipid molecules are highly insoluble compounds and molecules, and blood is nothing else but an aqua solution of cells and different compounds so uh, there is a problem for our body to transport insoluble lipids through uh, through blood and by blood so uh, in case of uh, transport of lipids directly and secretion directly into the blood those lipids would precipitate almost immediately forming uh, precipitates and plaques and atherosclerosis and it's going to be uh, a complete disaster very quickly so our organism solved that insolubility problem by incorporating lipid molecules in the form of lipoprotein particles and by those lipoprotein particles all peripheral tissues are actually supplied with lipids for their either structural or metabolic needs yet on the other side so th this is the one side of the medal uh, they are essential for us and we cannot function without lipoprotein particles but on the other side the over accumulation of certain types of lipoproteins uh, marked as hyperlipoproteinemias can uh, end up in the development of atherosclerosis and subsequently cardiovascular and cerebrovascular diseases so that is the reason why it is so important for all healthcare professionals to understand the metabolism of lipoproteins in details so speaking about the general structure of lipoprotein particles we can say that it consists of hydrophobic interior or nucleus and hydrophilic surface so in hydrophobic interior three acyl glycerols and cholesterol esters are found on hydrophilic surface we have a monolayer of phospholipids oriented towards an aqueous medium with their polar heads and towards hydrophobic interior with their hydrophobic tails uh, hydrophilic surface also contain pure cholesterol with OH group which is oriented towards an aqueous medium and steron ring and hydrocarbon chain towards the interior and of course different classes of apoproteins which are uh, oriented at the surface of each lipoprotein particles if you remember right from uh, general biochem course we mentioned that there are five major classes of lipoproteins those are helomicrons uh, VLDL very low density lipoproteins IDL intermediate density lipoproteins LDL low density lipoproteins and HDL high density lipoproteins 
So apart uh, from the difference in their density, they also differ in their size, content, electrophoretic mobility. So the upcoming table represents and summarizes the major characteristics of those five classes of lipoprotein particles. I hope that you remember this from our previous chapters, but I'm going to go through this table briefly. So helomicrons are uh, uh, particles with the least density. Uh, with the lowest density, and they are the largest particles. Uh, they have a large content, huge content of 3-acylglycerol. Here is stated approximately 90%, but it goes up to 98, 99%. And just a small uh, portion of proteins. So the ratio of proteins to lipids is 1 to 100. Because of the high content of lipids, uh, they are almost immobile in electric fields, so they are going to uh, remain at the starting point. Uh, VLDL particles are less dense, uh, and uh, they are more dense, I'm sorry, they are denser, but they are smaller, uh, with an increased portion of cholesterol comparing to TAGs, uh, slightly more uh, proteins comparing to helomicrons, uh, the ratio is one to nine, so they are the, the mobility is higher, so they are marked as P pre beta fraction. IDL particles with an increasing density, but they are smaller, uh, with a larger increasing con protein content, and they are faster and they're marked as slow pre beta fraction. LDL. Uh, increasing density, they are smaller, uh, with very high content of cholesterol. So if you remember, we consider LDL particles as major transporters of cholesterol. Also increasing protein content, thrust mobility in electric field is increased and they are marked as beta fraction. And HDL particles, the densest and the smallest, they are uh, the, the mobility they are marked as alpha fraction because their mobility is the highest because of the highest content of proteins, approximately 50% of the content are proteins and less lipids. So the ratio of proteins to lipids is one to one. But this is what you uh, already what you already know. But let's say a few words about specific apolipoproteins, so proteins which are integral parts of lipoprotein particles. And the role of apolipoprotein is to provide the solubility for lipoprotein particles. Also, they have a transport function and they also enable binding of lipoprotein particles to certain receptors. Apart from this, they are activators or inhibitors of enzymes which are involved in lipoprotein metabolism. This, uh, these roles and these functions are completed by a very specific arrangement of, lipopro of apolipoprotein molecules, and that is amphiphilic helix, meaning that the side chain of nonpolar amino acids are oriented towards the interior part of lipoproteins, and uh, residues of hydrophilic amino acids are oriented towards uh, the surface, towards the aqueous medium. So generally speaking, as you saw from the previous figure, lipoproteins, uh, lip, apo, apoproteins are located at lipoprotein surface. And there are five major apolipoproteins marked with capital letters A, B, C, D, and E, but it's believed that there are at least twice more. Each group has more or less a uh, number of subgroups, and they differ in their structure, physical chemical properties, function, and content in lipoprotein particles. This table actually represents uh, the overview of the major classes of apoproteins. So uh, let's start from the beginning. The group of apoA uh, 
uh, consist of ApoA1, ApoA2 and ApoA4 apolipoproteins. Uh, they are either structurals for uh, HDL or helomicrons and they can be also ligand for HDL particles and uh, they can be activators of certain enzymes more or less they are not connected with cardiovascular diseases then we have apo small a which is a structural for one special um, type of lipoprotein particles lipoprotein small a which probably affects fibrinolysis but uh, uh, it's still not uh, explained uh, which mechanisms are involved in, in such process, and, but it is believed that it, this one is connected with cardiovascular diseases. From the group of ApoB, we have two ApoB48 and ApoB100, which are structure, structural for helomicrons or structural for VLDL, IDL, LDL, and uh, ApoB sto is also ligand for LDL receptors. ApoB sto uh, 100 is uh, connected with cardiovascular diseases. From the group of Apo C, uh, we have Apo C1, 2, and 3, which uh, act as either activators or inhibitors of certain enzymes like lipoprotein lipase, and they are not connected with cardiovascular diseases. The function of Apo D is still unknown. And for ApoE, we know it's a ligand for LDL receptors and some other hepatic receptors. Uh, due to the, its phenotype, uh, it can be or cannot be connected with cardiovascular diseases. For the rest of the groups of apoproteins, the function is still unknown or unexplained. So metabolism of lipoproteins is rather complex. So, uh, by means of metabolism of lipoproteins, uh, we actually mean synthesis, distribution, chemical transformation, uptake by receptor, followed by degradations, which closes the cycle. Lipoprotein particles are considered to be rather dynamic particles because, please understand that there is the uh, there is a constant exchange of apolipoproteins and other components like cholesterol esters and 3-acylglycerols between different types of lipoproteins during their metabolism. Uh, lipoprotein particles are not chemically inert, so they are subjected to certain chemical modifications because there are numerous enzymes which are involved in the metabolism of these particles. And here is the list of some of those enzymes. Uh, lipoprotein lipase, LPL, hepatic 3-acylglycerol lipase, HTGL, uh, lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase, LCAT, we've already mentioned this one. Also acyl cholesterol acyl transferase, ACAT, we have already mentioned, hepatic lipase, HL, and so on and so on. Also, uh, there is one important role of cholesterol ester transfer protein, CETP. We've mentioned this protein when we discussed the digestion of lipids, and the role of this protein is to facilitate component exchange between lipoprotein particles. Generally, the metabolism of lipoproteins can be uh, divided into two uh, parts or two domains to exogenous and endogenous pathway. Exogenous pathway actually describes the uh, pathway and metabolism of dietary lipids from intestinum, from intestine to liver. So we know that dietary fats and cholesterol, just in brief as an overview, and then we're going to go into details. So dietary fats and cholesterol are absorbed to intestinal uh, mucosa cells to enterocytes in order to form helomicrons. Helomicrons are secreted to lymph and then to blood, so they are transformed chemically in capillaries to give helomicron remnants, which are um, removed from circulation by liver. And that is the end of exogenous pathway. Endogenous pathway describes the fate of endogenously synthesized lipids 
uh, their incorporation to VLDL particles, secretion to blood, chemical transformations to IDL and LDL particles, uh, transport of those particles to peripheral tissues. And finally, the third stage, which some authors consider to be the part of endogenous pathway, some authors consider to be the, the separate pathway, that is reverse transport of cholesterol, which describes how excess amounts of cholesterol are transported from peripheral tissues back to liver, where, there, where cholesterol is going to be subjected uh, into transformation to bile acids and bile salts secreted to blood and excreted by feces. So let's start with the exogenous pathway, which is nothing else but the metabolism of helomicron particles. What we've mentioned a couple of times so far, helomicrons are synthesized in anthrocytes on endoplasmic reticulum. And helomicrons consist of dietary 3-acyl glycerols. And if you remember the chapter on digestion, we say that the content of 3-acyl glycerols in diet is more than 90% uh, of dietary lipids. So it's not questionable why helomicrons contain that much 3-acyl glycerol comparing to all other components. Also, helomicrons contain cholesterol and specific apolipoproteins. Uh, speaking about apolipoproteins, um, helomicrons uh, incorporate APOA1, APOA2, and APOA4 as structural apoproteins. And also they incorporate that specific ApoB48 also as a structural component. And all that is incorporated in enterocytes. ApoB48 is N terminal part of a larger ApoB100. Both uh, apoproteins are encoded with the same gene, but ApoB4 is the smaller fragment, uh, which is approximately 48% of the larger ApoB100. So that is the reason why uh, we have that those names B48 and B100. Also, what is very important to uh, memorize here is that uh, the part or the main of the protein, which is responsible for recognition and binding to a specific receptor, is located at C-terminal end of ApoB100. So that, that domain is not found in ApoB48, which means that ApoB48 cannot bind to receptor. When incorporating all these components, 3-acid glycerol, cholesterol, ApoA, and ApoB48, then the so-called nascent or newborn helomicron is synthesized. Uh, helomicron is then secreted to lymph and then through thoracic duct to blood. In blood, uh, the maturation of nascent helomicron occurs. So in blood, uh, helomicron uh, uh, accepts APOC2 predominantly, APOC1 and APOC2 as well, but dominantly APOC2 and APOE from HDL particles, thus becoming mature helomicron containing APOA, APOB48, APOBC2 and APOE. In blood, helomicrons are secreted only postprandial, approximately one to two hours after a meal, which actually uh, gives the blood plasma very characteristic chelous milky form. So, uh, mature helomicron now undergoes chemical transformation because EPOC2 activates lipoprotein lipase on capillary endothelial cells and lipoprotein lipase starts TAG hydrolysis to glycerol and fatty acids. And here is the figure representing the upcoming events. So mature helomicron 
undergoes TAG hydrolysis catalyzed by lipoprotein lipase from uh, endothelial cells to fatty acids and glycerol. Fatty acids are now due to poor solubility attached to blood plasma albumin and readily transported to muscles and adipose tissues predominantly but some other tissues as well when they eat, need energy. The rest of the molecule is called helomicron remnant. This is a particle which is much smaller, like 20-fold smaller. It's denser and it lost APOC apoprotein, which was brought back to HDL particle. But it still contains APOE, which is responsible for binding to specific LDL receptor. This LDL receptor can recognize either ApoB100 or ApoB100 uh, or ApoE, and it's located at, at, uh, at the, uh, on the liver. So, uh, the whole uh, metabolism of lipoprotein, of helomicrons, is completed uh, inside six to eight hours after a meal. So, in physiological conditions, kilomicrons are not considered to have any kind of atherogenic potential. But uh, if uh, the removal of kilomicron exceeds eight hours, then there is a certain possibility of kilomicron precipitation, um, which actually causes so called postprandial lipemia. And this precipitation and the absence of sufficient and efficient removal of kilomicron's remnant is going to affect the metabolism of other lipoproteins. It's going to disturb the metabolism of LDL. It's going to disturb the metabolism of HDL particles, contributing to the atherogenicity of kilomicrons. So they exhibit certain atherogenicity only if they are not removed on time inside that time interval of eight hours. Uh, lipoprotein lipase is worth mentioning because this is an enzyme existing in two isoenzyme forms, like adipose isoenzyme of LPL and muscle isoenzyme of LPL. Uh, adipose LPL has a higher KM, which means lower affinity, and this isoenzyme is more active after the meal when there are more fats available for metabolism. Also, insulin stimulates the secretion of adipose LPL, which then activates the hydrolysis of TAGs to fatty acids. Due to the poor solubility of fatty acids, they are attached to blood plasma albumin, uh, brought to adipose tissue, and then converted to 3-acid glycerols and stored as TAG reservoir in adipose tissue. On the other side, muscle isoenzyme of LPL has a lower KM, which means higher affinity for TAG, which actually uh, enables the muscle tissue to obtain fatty acids for energy needs, even when the concentration of lipoprotein particles is rather low. Speaking of the fate of uh, glycerol, which is formed upon the hydrolysis of TAGs by LPL, it's transported back to the liver, and in liver it's involved in the biosynthesis of TAGs, which is going to be our topic for the next video. So, let's move on to endogenous pathway of lipid, lipoprotein metabolism, which describes the uh, mechanism of uh, and metabolism of VLDL, IDL, and, IDL, and LDL particles. VLDL particles are synthesized in uh, hepatocytes, in liver, on endoplasmic reticulum, and this is what we know from our previous topics. And VLDL actually contains now endogenously synthesized 3-acid glycerol, cholesterol and cholesterol esters, and specific capolipoproteins. In the structure of VLDL particle, ApoB100 is found. Uh, all those components together 
uh, form so-called nascent VLDL particles like we had nascent helomicron and VLDL is now secreted to circulation. In blood, uh, the same sequence of events happens like with helomicron. So VLDL accepts ApoC2 and ApoE from HDL particles, becoming mature VLDL. ApoC2 then activates lipoprotein lipase on capillary endothelial cells, thus promoting the hydrolysis of TAG to glycerol and fatty acids. Fatty acids are bound to blood albumin and transported to muscle, adipose tissues, but also to some other extra hepatic tissues. After these chemical changes, VLD remnants remain, but they still contain ApoE apoprotein. Approximately half of VLDL remnants are bound to uh, LDL receptors throughout ApoE and removed from circulation back to liver. If you ask why not through ApoB100, it's because there are some sterical issues preventing the binding of ApoB100, thus exposing ApoE on the other side and make it available for binding to receptor. Other half, 50%, uh, of VLDL particles are actually transformed in circulation to IDL particles, which are rather unstable, uh, short lifespan particles, which are then metabolized by uh, hepatic 3 glycerate lipase from hepatic sinusoids to uh, to LDL particles. And this is the figure actually uh, overviewing these pathways. So here we are, uh, we have VLDL particles in blood uh, accepting ApoC2 and ApoE from HDL particles and subjected to lipoprotein lipase activity and degradation of TAGs to fatty acids and glycerols. VLDL remnants in circulation are converted to IDL particles and IDL particles are now subjected to either transformation by HTGL to LDL particles or they can be removed from circulation uh, via certain specific receptors. Uh, so here is the overview of the upcoming story. LDL particles now can be either removed and brought back to liver or can be removed by peripheral tissues and via specific LDL receptors or certain changed uh, LDL particles with certain defects can be uh, removed from circulation by macrophaging and uh, formation of foam cells. But let's start from uh, the beginning. So here we are so far, we have elucidated the VLDL fate. Now we are moving on to IDL particles. So what do we know so far? We know that IDL particles contain ApoE and ApoB100. So they can be either removed uh, by hepatocytes binding to LDL receptors via ApoE, or they can be transformed to IDL particles in circulation. Actually, the metabolism of IDL particle is determined by genetic polymorphism of ApoE apoprotein. And there are three phenotypes, E2, E3, and E4. The difference in those phenotypes is of uh, the composition of amino acids at position 112 and 158. So phenotype E3 uh, contains cysteine and arginine, arginine. Uh, E4 contains both arginines and E2 both cysteines. So the common phenotype, which is a physiological phenotype, is E3. Uh, occurs in 60% of population. Uh, E4 phenotype has a lower affinity and E2 the lowest affinity for LDL receptors. So uh, persons with E2 phenotype actually cannot 
uh, bind IDL particles to LDL receptors, and this is explained by so-called familiary hyperlipoproteinemia type 3 with a high tendency to develop cardiovascular diseases. In this case, we have an increased concentration of IDL, an increased concentration of 3-acid glycerols, and disturbed metabolism of both helomicron remnants and VLDL particles. Uh, in persons having those uh, changed phenotypes, IDL particles become atherogenic. So, uh, because they cannot be removed by receptors and by receptor-mediated mechanism, they tend to be removed by macrophages, increasing the concentration of foam cells, which are in the basis of atherosclerotic plaques. Also, in patients with diabetes mellitus, uh, increased concentration of IDL particles are found. LDL metabolism arises from IDL metabolism, so when IDL particle uh, loses a certain amount of 3-acid uh, glycerols by hepatic 3 glycerate lipase and it loses EPOE as well, it becomes LDL particle containing only EPOB100. LDL particle is rich in cholesterol and cholesterol esters. So LDL particle actually, as we know, represents the major transport of cholesterol to peripheral tissue. What is also important is that one LDL particle contain, contains one EPOB100 molecule. And 90% of the total amount of EPOB100 is actually found in LDL particles, which is of crucial importance for the application of this in diagnostics, because EPOB100 and its laboratory determination is a fantastic marker of increased risk for development of atherosclerosis. What is the fate of LDL particles? 60% of LDL particles, as you've seen previously, are uh, transported back to the liver and attached to um, LDL receptors by EPOB100 and removed from circulation. 40% uh, of LDL particles are brought and transported to peripheral tissues uh, where they can be absorbed and uh, from extrahepatic tissues for usage for different metabolic and structural needs. So there are se se several ways uh, and mechanisms how to remove LDL from circulation. So let's summarize them. Uh, first, uh, we said that 60% of LDL is brought back to liver. So in liver, LDL particles are removed by LDL receptors, which can bind EPOB100 apoprotein, and they are removed by the mecha mechanism of endocytosis. It will be explained uh, in a minute. And then LDL particle is subjected to hydrolysis by lysosomes to its components, cholesterol, fatty acids, amino acids, and so on. Cholesterol, which is, which is released from LDL particle, is then converted to bile acids or salts, uh, secreted to bile in the form of those acids and salts or in the pure form, and then to intestine, and then either involved in the digestion or, uh, or prepared for excretion by feces. Speaking of peripheral tissues like muscle, adipose tissue, adrenal cortex, gonads, uh, the removal of LDL particles is also accomplished by LDL receptors, by LDL medi uh, recep receptor mediated mechanism of removal, and especially. Um, a large number of those receptors is found on those tissues at, uh, in which the, uh, there is an increased synthesis of steroid hormones. We mentioned adrenal cortex synthesizing 
uh, glucocorticoids, mineral corticoids, gonads, which synthesize estrogen, androgens, progestins, and so on. And of course, there is an alternative pathway uh, completed by macrophages of reticular endothelial system. And macrophages are considered to be uh, state-of-the-art scavengers, which are picking up those remnants of LDL particles and IDL particles, which cannot be removed from circulation by receptor-mediated mechanism. This is an uncontrolled pathway, which actually yields the overaccumulation of cholesterol esters and formation of so-called foam cells, which are, as I've already mentioned, are the basis of atherosclerotic plaques. So uh, this third mechanism uh, is an, uh, by macrophages is employed for the removal of uh, defected uh, or uh, alterated lipoprotein particles like alterated IDL because of those ApoE phenotypes or uh, oxidized LDL particles when there is an increased oxidative stress in the organism. So these changed particles cannot be recognized by LDL receptors. So the only way to remove them is by macrophages and uh, uncontrolled pathway of formation of foam cells. Um, let me get back to that receptor mediated removal of LDL particle and the upcoming uh, figure is gonna give uh, the presentation of the mechanism. So LDL receptor, you can understand that it's some kind of a negatively charged uh, glycoprotein and the part of the molecule, if we take a look at this figure, and the part of the molecule where endocytosis is going to happen is covered by one specific protein called clathrin. So those uh, pits are actually coated with clathrin in order to stabilize the structure, and there are uh, LDL receptors inside. So intact LDL particle is actually captured by this coated pits and it's brought by endocytosis inside the cell. So inside the cell, those vesicles first loses clathrin, which is brought back to coat the next pit, and then the rest of the molecule containing receptors and LDL particle actually forms huge endosome, like it's marked here. So the pH of the endosome drops down readily and this drop down and alteration of pH actually causes the removal of uh, LDL uh, receptors, which can be recycled and brought back to those coated pits for the next endocytosis. And the rest of the LDL particles is now subjected to hydrolysis by lysosomes, and it's hydrolyzed and degraded into components, fatty acids, amino acids, and cholesterol. What is the fate cholesterol in the cell? First, it can be used for structural purposes, so it can be incorporated in cell membranes. It can be subjected to steroid hormones biosynthesis, or it can be subjected to bile acids or salts production, depending on the type of the cell in which cholesterol is imported. Uh, the rest of the cholesterol, which is not used for different purposes, can be esterified by intracellular acyl cholesterol acyl transferase to cholesterol ester and deposited in the form of specific storage particles of cholesterol. Uh, the oversupply of cholesterol or the excess amount of cholesterol uh, is very well known to inhibit HMG coenzyme reductase, which is a rate-limiting enzyme for cholesterol synthesis. So the excess amounts of cholesterol actually immediately inhibits the synthesis of cholesterol inside the cell. Moreover, the excess of cholesterol, and we've already mentioned that, inhibits the synthesis of LDL receptors, so less uh, LDL particles are going to be imported by endocytosis inside the cells 
in case of excess and in cases of oversupply of cholesterol. But what happens with uh, the reverse transport of cholesterol about the removal of excess amounts of cholesterol? This is explained by the reverse transport of cholesterol, which means the, and explains the HDL metabolism. What we know about HDL particles, we know that they are the smallest and densest lipoproteins, and they consist of more than 550% of proteins. Uh, different types of proteins are involved in the structure EPOA, uh, I mean EPOA1 and EPOA2 uh, is structural, and EPOC and EPOE. Uh, they are synthesized in liver and the HDL particles are reservoirs of EPOC and EPOE in circulation because uh, you, you remember the, the HDL particle is going to donate EPOC and EPOE to helomicrons and VLDL particles during their chemical uh, changes. It's also responsible for the uptake of excess amounts of cholesterol from peripheral tissues and their esterification into cholesterol esters by lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase and bringing all those excess cholesterol back to liver where this cholesterol is going to be either prepared for excretion or incorporated into the structure of new lipoprotein particles. Uh, we can talk about two subclasses of HDL particles, HDL2 and HDL3. HDL2 containing more lipids comparing to HDL3 particles. But the particle which is synthesized in liver containing those apoproteins, it's called nascent HDL particle and it has discoidal shape. Uh, the rest of the uh, pathway of reverse transport of cholesterol haven't been fully explained yet, but it is believed that it occurs in four phases. So the phase one is actually binding of nascent discoidal HDL to EPOA1 receptors on peripheral tissue cells. That binding to A1 receptor causes the mobilization of those intracellular cholesterols to be transported towards membrane and incorporated into the discoidal form of HDL. Thus, nascent HDL is transformed to HDL type 3. In the phase 2, Cholesterol, which is incorporated in HDL particle in the phase 1, is now esterified in circulation by the enzyme lecithin, -holin -acyl, lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase, thus disabling the free cholesterol to exit HDL particles, which is very important because if cholesterol is not captured, kind of captured, in the form of cholesterol esters, then we cannot talk about the protective properties of HDL particles. Uh, during these changes, cholesterol esterification, HDL3 subclass is converted to HDL2A uh, subclass, which now has the spherical shape instead of discoidal shape. Phase 3 actually describes the indirect transport of cholesterol esters to liver, uh, which actually means the transfer of cholesterol esters to VLDL particles and helomicrons in exchange for 3-acyl glycerols. And this exchange of cholesterol esters and TAGs is completed and facilitated by CETP protein. Uh, with this exchange, cholesterol esters for TAGs, HDL2A is transferred to HDL2B subclass. And in the last phase four of this reverse transport, uh, cholesterol is directly transported back to liver and subjected to degradation by hepatic lipase. Uh, after this, HDL2B is now reconverted to HDL3, which can enter the new phase two of this reverse transport of cholesterol. 
and instead of conclusion i would like to say a couple of uh, a couple of facts about hdl particle uh, increased concentration of hdl particles are believed to have certain kind of cardioprotective role on the other side decreased concentration of hdls represents an increased risk for development of atherosclerosis and cardiovascular diseases but protective effect of hdl particle is actually associated to that hdl2 subclass where uh, cholesterol is captured in the form of cholesterol ester we all know that hdl is responsible for the removal of excess amounts of cholesterol from peripheral tissues but it is also believed that hdl particles exhibit certain antioxidant activity but still the mechanisms are to be elucidated also it is shown that obesity smoking diabetes type 2 decrease uh, the level of hdl in blood but oppositely moderate physical activity not intense but moderate physical activity and moderate alcohol consumption uh, i have to explain this moderate alcohol consumption meaning uh, one to one and a half deciliter of red wine daily increases hdl levels and thus promoting its protective role so having in mind all these numerous facts about the lipoprotein uh, metabolism i think that they are just enough to confirm the our starting point and starting hypothesis that the knowledge of, about metabolism of lipoprotein is of crucial importance for proper understanding of a number of medical important and serious medical conditions in uh, medical practice so uh, my dear students colleagues friends that would be all regarding this very important topic of lipoprotein metabolism so uh, i hope it was understandable uh, i hope it was at least as interesting as it is as it is for me each time i'm presenting it uh, please enjoy the rest of the day enjoy this uh, fabulous uh, super hot april day here in novi sad and until the next topic bye bye and see you soon